Tonight, live from the Inspire Theater, where the Strip and Fremont Street collide, in the collision capital of fabulous downtown Las Vegas, we present the Downtown Podcast. Starring your hosts, Dylan Jorgensen, Jillian Minter, Trey Talia Ferry, social media co correspondent Kyle Harris, and music by yours truly, DJ Lenny Alfonso. Tonight's guest, Fred and Arun from Nacho Daddies, and Silo Moses, founder of Serving Hope LV. Entertainment by Yvonne Silva. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for the man who just bought stock in the Riviera, Mr. Trey Tayaferi. Hey, everybody. How's like everybody doing? Yeah, oh, keep, keep it clapping. That's okay, yeah. Yeah, all right. How's everyone doing today? Awesome. Good, are we ready? Yeah? Oh, that's good, that's good. Um, thank you guys for coming. I know it was a little uh, short notice to come to the Inspire Theater, but uh, we got suspended from the Airstream for deflating footballs. <laughs> Did you guys hear about this? Tom Brady was suspended four games for de deflating footballs. Is that right? Yeah, they said that he, uh, uh, he was suspended for being probably aware of what was going on, which is weird because uh, that's what they told me when I graduated high school. I was probably aware of what was going on. <laughs> Clark County School District at its best. But you know what else? Harry Reid chimed in on this, on this issue, and he said that the NFL should, be, should care less about Tom Brady's balls and more about team names that are racist and offensive. So the NFL changed the name of the o Oakland Raiders to the Oakland Readers because he's got an eye patch. Anyways, <laughs> look for that on uh, Cox. That would have been hilarious. It would have been yeah. hilarious. Trust me, trust me. It was hilarious. It was good. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this Uber thing's not going away. Uber's coming. They're coming back. Yeah. yeah. Uber has been rejected by Nevada more times than I was reject rejected during prom. <laughs> oh. But this time, Nevada senators voted 18 to 1 for a bill that would help uh, transportation network companies that allow people to hail rides uh, through their smartphone, AKA um, Lyft and Uber. Um, I didn't know that there was, there was 19 senators in Nevada, did you? No, I didn't know that. Can you name one of them? Name uh, one of them. Mary Jane? Mary Jane, that's no. one of them, yeah. Mary Jane. They're trying to legalize Uber, <laughs> but it seems like it's, it's a, it's easier to legalize marijuana than it is to legalize ride-sharing apps, <laughs> which is where we are right now. I think now. I ruined your joke on that one, I think. No, you didn't. You're fine. <laughs> You're great. Everyone loves you. But if Uber, if Uber does become legalized, I know about 10 people who will be employed tomorrow. Right here, everyone, there volunteers. Yeah. All these volunteers right here. Either sponsor our show so we can get paid or legalize <laughs> Uber. Either one of them, please. Please, thank you. Okay. Anyway, anyway, um, so what's going on with you, Lenny? Do you got anything going on? Uh, today's a good day. Uh, we're, uh, I'm always at the downtown cocktail room after this every Thursday. Every Thursday, so downtown right next cocktail door. room. Where's the, where's the downtown cocktail room located? It's actually attached to this. Uh, it's the next building here at 111 South Las Vegas Boulevard. All right, check so them out. If you, can, if you can figure out how to get in there, you're, you're welcome. Oh, cool. All right, all right. So um, here's some sad news. Fox just announced that they are canceling American Idol. Yeah. Huh. Ooh, that is not the response I was thinking. Uh, which is sad because they've given us great talent such as Taylor Hicks, Ruben Stutter, yeah. Sanjaya, those <laughs> titans of the music industry. No longer will be here. Actually, I'm, I'm more sad about uh, Ryan Seacrest. I don't know what he's going to do now that he doesn't, That's true. Yep. doesn't have a job. Oh. Yeah. Uh, for what audition? This is where I, I come to audition. No, I was telling American Idol is being Do canceled. I look at you or do I look at the camera? No, it, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I tell you something. What's going on right now? I think you'll understand. Yeah. But when I, I say that something, I want to hold your hand. I want to hold your hand. Your hand. Right. How'd I do? Yeah. Do, do I make it? 
I don't know what you're I, talking about. I think you're you're going to the Airstream Village. Oh, thank All you right. So much. Thank you. Yeah. I made it. I made it. Let's give a round of applause. Yes. Is there something going on I don't know you're about? Just out of the loop on that one. That's all. That's all. All right. <laughs> B, everybody. Let's give it up for B. Yeah. That was great. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> um, so here's a funny story. Yeah. There's a woman who is suing her university because she failed the class twice. She's suing the university for failing her twice. Twice. Obviously, it wasn't a logics class. <laughs> yeah. Actually, she's, su she's suing because they didn't, they didn't have any disability uh, accommodations for her, um, her anxiety and depression, which I think is, is valid, except she's in nursing school. <laughs> anxiety, nursing school, it's like a dyslexic person trying to teach English. Don't you think so? <laughs> I've been in some very hectic ERs, and I'm pretty sure uh, having anxiety is not the best choice if you're a nurse, right? Nurse Betty kind of thing, yeah. Nurse Betty, yeah. Not very anxious, <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, okay, so you guys like that one, I see. <laughs> um, oh. So Domino's is coming out with a new thing. Okay. Where if you tweet the pizza emoji to them, they'll deliver you a pizza. Yeah! <laughs> yeah. So basically, I learned to read for nothing. <laughs> We got a great show for you guys tonight, but first let's give it up for DJ Lenny Love Alfonso. Hi guys, thanks you all for coming out. So our first guest this evening started out doing random acts of kindness and has built this into a weekly activity called Serving Hope Las Vegas. Please welcome Silo Moses. Silo, right. come on out. Thank you for being thank here. You. Thank you, thank Please you. Please have a seat. Thank you. I was going to moonwalk out, but I didn't know if uh, my dancing skills oh. were up to par. Do you so. want me to redo that? Yeah, could we? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so what inspired you to start Serving Hope? Uh, well, Serving Hope is a uh, think tank organization. We're all volunteers, just like you guys here. So you guys give it up for Downtown Project. Hot, hot pass, sorry. <laughs> Uh, we're a group of organized uh, people that come together. We're volunteers as well. We serve uh, downtown and we serve uh, homeless, jobless, and helpless. So here in Las Vegas in the Valley. So how did it start? So uh, it started literally about 10 months ago. The inspiration was uh, I went down and served about 30 people with a bowl of spaghetti. And after I served 30 people with one bowl of spaghetti, my next immediate thought was, I wonder how many people I could feed with two bowls of spaghetti. So I went down with two big bowls like this and I served close to 60 people. And uh, I told one person who told another, who told another, who told another. And today, what started off by myself about 10 months ago is now literally around 61 volunteers. Mm. Wow, that's impressive. And how many meals have you served? We've served close to, in the last 10 months, over 12,000 hot plates of food. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. And, and it started off in your kitchen. Yeah, it started off, uh, I basically went in my cupboard and pulled out a box of spaghetti and uh, pulled out some sauce and I was like, I'm gonna make this and I'm gonna bring it down and feed some people. And uh, went down there and like I said, I served 30 people and it just took off from there. And now you're, you're getting food from Yeah, we're, we're getting, uh, 10 months later, you know, it, it didn't start off that way. When we started yeah. off, I was going door knocking, asking corporations for food and it was no, 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 right? Yes. Um, but eventually it started to take off and snowball as soon as we signed on Starbucks as a donator. They donate to us now. Uh, Einstein Bagels donates to us. Uh, we have Fresh and Easy, Albertsons. They all donate to us now on our Monday nights where we serve anywhere from 250 to 500 people in one night. That's so great. So where can people find you on Mondays? You're yeah, downtown, we're, right? we're right here downtown uh, in between uh, Bonanza and MLK right on H Street and McWilliams. And we serve literally right on the sidewalk. We don't have a building or anything. It's just we serve right off the sidewalks. Yeah. So, uh, and the reason why my passion comes from Serving Hope LV is literally uh, over a year and six months ago, I was actually homeless myself right here in Las Vegas. Oh, wow. So I, uh, as soon as I got back on my feet, literally I knew the first thing I wanted to do was get back. So. Yeah, and help, help others get on their feet oh, as Oh, yeah, well. absolutely. And you don't have to be yeah. homeless for us to work with you. We don't judge whatsoever. Uh, if anyone in the community needs help, we're there to help them. We've, ho we've helped veterans, we've helped uh, people who just didn't have jobs find jobs, 
And uh, we've helped, you know, not just those on the streets, but those off the streets. We're right now donating to a trailer park community where it's 90% kids, and the kids only eat Monday through Friday when they're at school. So we donate a ton of food to their, uh, their trailer park community so the kids can eat on Saturdays and Sundays prior to school on Monday. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, thank wow. you. So if people want to help out, do they, they just show up on Monday nights? or? How yeah, do they, they can they show up on Monday here? nights. Uh, they can go to our Facebook group page. Our Facebook group page now has over 700 people on it. So give us a round of applause for that guy. Right? Uh, again, this is all snowballed and happened within the last uh, nine to ten months. But our Facebook group page now, it's uh, Serving Hope, our hashtag Serving Hope LV for Las Vegas, mm -hmm. or Serving the Homeless on Monday nights. If you search either or, and you'll find us on Facebook and join our group and come down on Monday nights and help us serve. That's so great. And yeah. now you have a book coming out about I your do. experience, yes, right? Yes, yes. So my book starts off basically day one of being homeless, and then it ends somewhere around me finding my first job. So I was homeless for about seven months here in Vegas on the streets. Uh, so I've slept in you know, uh, bathrooms, public bathrooms that smelled like urine. I slept on the floor. I did everything. I did anything that I could to be able to basically live and survive. And my book goes into my true story. So That's so inspiring. Well, thank you so much for coming out. When thank can you. people find the book? When does it come uh, out? It's coming out next month. Okay. Uh, they can be able to get a hard copy, a soft copy, and a digital download off of Amazon's and iTunes. Okay, and then they can find you on social media if they want to volunteer. Silo Moses. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, this is All it. All right. Well, thank you so much for being thank here. You. Really thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Up next, we have Dylan with Fred in a room from Nacho Daddy. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. We almost had a chance. It, uh, okay. <laughs> okay, so like the next guys are my friends, but they're super successful. And I think that we're going to have an amazing conversation about the things that they've learned from failure and the things that they've learned from success. And um, they, uh, there's lots of them. So put your hands together for Mr. Fred Mosler and Arun Ujan. Come on out, you two. You guys are the best. Thank you so much, yeah. All right, have a seat, have a seat. Uh, all right, um, okay, so we are ready to rock and roll here. And I, okay, so uh, or why don't you, you start for us, everyone. <laughs> what do you want me to say? Okay, no, Fred. Should we interview you? <laughs> you know, there's a metab, we, we joke about this thing, Fred's got a metabolism issue, and we go to the gym uh, a few times a week, and the gym guy is like, nobody loses weight while drinking except you. So if you know there's a genetic advantage you have to metabolizing sugar, which is really cool, and I wish I had it. Um, OK, so let's start with pizza. OK, let's go. Well, it's got him eating from my hands. That was great. Yeah. My first job was at uh, Taco Bell. I when I was in high school. Like, I thought you, wait, no, thought you wanted to be a plumber like, uh, or something. I mean, my first, I did deliver newspapers and I did other stuff, but my first, you know, where I got a paycheck was Taco Bell. Oh, really? So I, I you know, I, I fell in love with like uh, food and beverage, I think, uh, early okay. on. And, um, but I always had cool shoes when I was at Taco Bell. Yeah, but, I'm sure, um, I'm sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but. Um, but you were crafting the yeah, perfect, was, like, uh, ex fourth exact, meal exact, for everybody. Exactly, to... and, uh, you know, so, um, so, uh, you know, it was like, uh, when we moved to Las Vegas, I, I, uh, I didn't know anyone, didn't know any great place to eat, and, and I love, I love pizza, and so I was actually uh, at, uh, I think it was out in Green Valley at uh, Green Valley Ranch or whatever, and I was playing blackjack one night and just been to town because that's what you do, I guess. Well, right. that's what I do when you come to town, play. like you know, <laughs> you play blackjack on a Saturday night, yeah. and um, and so I was playing blackjack. So the table was like. You know, telling everybody, oh, the best pizza in town is this, you know, pizza place in Henderson, and like, you have to go and you know, so I'm eavesdropping because I'm thinking, oh, this is a great yeah, tip, you know, yeah, I'm gonna sure. go find some great pizza, and so I went there the next week, and um, I walk in, and, like, I order a pizza, and out of the kitchen walks the guy that was sitting at the blackjack table, and he actually owned the pizza place. So oh, he, was like, yeah. he had okay. So he was guerrilla marketing. He was spreading the. 
Um, but anyway, long story short, he, you know, had trouble running the pizza place and it failed and, and I thought, wow, this is a chance to like get involved with food and beverage and so we kind of like helped him out of bankruptcy and yeah. like thought he would run it, but then it was a complete disaster and <laughs> See, it he left it? and yeah. we ended up having this pizza place that we had no idea what to do with and, oh. and it was an incredible failure. And so based on that, we decided, hey, let's open another let's restaurant. Let's try again, called. right? Like once you fail, yeah. you're like, ah, and closer to the, yeah. to the working one, and, right? And yeah. we love nachos and nobody's <clears throat> done like gourmet nachos, like, you know, barbecue chicken, whatever else. And so we were literally sitting around our kitchen table and my future wife at the time, my, my girlfriend and my other partner. You're, like, will, you're, you're playing so will and nacho. A, like, what's yeah, we should, we should do yeah. a nacho restaurant. <laughs> and and uh, my wife said, well, let's call it Nacho Daddy. And, uh, and so we're like, great, let's do that. And oh, that was Megan. Okay, so that's Megan. Megan came up with the name, oh. yeah, and the little character. It's on a na It's literally a napkin, but then that was a disaster because <laughs> our GM left on opening <laughs> night, and, and, and the best line on Yelp, that I've ever seen for any restaurant. He said, if Nacho Daddy was a food truck, I would steal it and I would drive it into Lake Mead and it would sink to the bottom and not even the carp would eat it. And I thought, that is fantastic. And, uh, and so it was like a complete disaster. Really? But from that, that was any of you. We, we, we hung in there and uh, we hung in there and, and now we have a great team of people. And, I think the Nacho Daddy downtown just today is four stars on Yelp, like, and that's hard Whoa. to get. Stan and, uh, right. and they're doing they're doing really well and figured a lot of things out. We have three locations and and it's growing and and so, but yeah, it was not an easy road. No, no, it was <laughs> tough. Yeah, I asked out one of those girls and she's like, no. <laughs> that, was <tough. laughs> uh, that was rough. <laughs> But I still went back because I like the food. I just dealt with the weirdness. It was strange. Um, all right. OK, so Arun, so let's talk about your story. You uh, were CTO at Zappos. You, it seemed like you got this amazing offer to go to San Francisco. But um, explain why you came back and what happened with that. Um, so like, the, usually what I, you know, I go work somewhere, I, most of my career I've worked like you know, three or four years in a city and then I get like bored and I'm like, I wanna do something different. And so uh, I was at Zappos for like you know, longer than I'd worked anywhere else and lived in Vegas for longer than I'd worked, lived anywhere else. And I was like, at some point I just needed a change. And so then I got this amazing opportunity in San Francisco and left. Um, it, was, it was interesting, you know, going back to San Francisco, I've lived in San Francisco before. And uh, what I noticed was, I think I'd gotten used to a sort of community and sort of like an emotional attachment to people and the way people worked in Vegas and at Zappos. Very human, yeah. That I couldn't, you know, Silicon Valley felt transactional. Uh, it felt uh, best practice, right? So you right. walk into this company and they're like, you know, got like five VCs and they've got the same pattern that they've applied at every other company in Silicon Valley. And then, you know, I worked with Tony and Fred for five years prior to that, where we were try, trying every new idea on the planet. And all of a sudden, I'm in this cookie cutter type, you know, Did you have smaller a company. Um, yeah, you sort had a of. It was you had a cube -ish. Corner office. You had a corner <laughs> yeah, I did have a cube. It was open office ish. But, like, there's like, you know, 20 ish. VPs around. Like, you know, there's like, it's yeah, just, that makes you sense. know, it's like very, you know, just supposedly a small company, but yeah. quite bureaucratic, right? So. The whole point is, you go to Silicon Valley, it feels very transactional. It's pretty much like management science from 80 years ago. Yeah. And uh, you work with Tony Shea and Fred, it's completely different. So I'm like thinking, A, it feels transactional. B, this is not like interesting to me at all. Yeah. I'm gonna go try and find new ways to work. I'm gonna go back to sort of like an emotional environment uh, where like I have friends and a community. And, uh, and so I came back here. And so one of the things that I found is like, Silicon Valley is great and it's well known for the fact that it has a nice tech community. But the fact that Vegas is also coming up, you know, it's coming up as a great little tech community. And uh, this notion that, you know, I can come here and have a community of not just like friends, but also um, technology professionals that right. I can hang out with. Uh, so that was, you know, those are sort of the big reasons. Okay, so, I want, so in the future, like what kind of people are you looking for? Is it gonna be like crazy data scientists working on AI stuff? Or are you looking for kind of the classic 
I think there's like both. So I think we'll, we'll, we'll want full stack developers that are working on you know, the, the front end, like in terms of like building, let's say, a mobile experience or right. a social experience or whatever it might be. But we're also looking for heavy sort of machine learning type folks who are building, we have these rich data, data assets. We have information about customer behavior from you know, 15 years, right? Right. Uh, and so we have this rich data asset that we can essentially use via machine learning for various different applications, right? How we, who we attract, how we buy, uh, how we tailor our website experiences to the customers that we seek to attract and retain. Yeah. So there's some heavy duty data science okay. type stuff. All right. So you had fun even on the failed pizza company? Somewhere along the way? No, it was great. It's an, <laughs> you know, it's an investment, right? It's, yeah. it's, um, it, was, it was really fun because we learned a lot, you know, and, and I think, I think, uh, I think our. I think you, if you take the approach to life that that you know failure isn't the end of something, but failure is is actually the beginning of building of a, it, it's part of the journey to to building experience. Then then it kind of resets your whole mind frame, right? Sure. Like that's yeah, awesome. Yeah. All right, I think we're out of time here, but give them a round of applause. Thank you guys for coming out. We really appreciate it. Everyone, it's a pleasure. Right. Thanks, buddy. Look at Buff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got the you got the muscles. <laughs> Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming out and chatting with everybody. All right, we have performance artist up next, and then we are ready to party. That's the beginning of it. So. Thank you, guys. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Yvonne Silva. you that I'm the one losing trying to help you out and be 
That was great. Thank you. That was amazing. That was amazing. So Tell everyone where we can find you. I'm at uh, Pizza Rock downtown every other Sunday. So this coming Sunday in the morning for brunch, 11 to 3 p.m. All right, you had me at pizza. All right, give her a round of applause. All right, that's our show tonight. We want to thank our guests. We want to thank Inspire Theater for putting up with us, and especially to you guys for sticking around. We love you. Good night.